Dude, we were using my mom's old Forerunner to um, take out trash cans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! I used to fucking I used to t- I, my first car was a fucking uh, uh, Chevy Blazer, and we yeah. would we would set up in the Pizza Hut. There was a Pizza Hut connected to like a fucking giant and a fucking just a, a shitty strip mall in in Dundalk actually, and we would just set up like gr- uh, uh, shopping cart obstacle courses, and I would just smash through <laughs> shopping carts in the fucking. And How then, fun is it? Yeah. Once it's you the get, most fun. Once you get through the actual thing of like, oh no, I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Once you've committed yeah. just, to smashing shit with a car. Yeah. So we had my mom's forerunner. I didn't have a car. I think my car died or something. So I, we're driving around, and I was like, hey, we should take out. I thought it was funny. I was like, let's let's take out these trash cans. It was like, boom. <laughs> yeah. And then it just became the whole night's activity. Of course. We just like running shit over. But we were trying to push a porto potty over. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to push it over. And then we drove by it. And I like tried to push it with my hand. But it fucking didn't. It just jammed my hand. And I go, oh, I broke my arm. I broke my arm. And my friend Joel was recording me on his hand- camcorder. It was back in the day at camcorders. He goes, I don't think you broke your arm. And, go, I and then like five minutes later, he lost the videotape. But five we've watched. Uh. We watched it as adults. Five minutes later, he's just sitting there. He goes, hey, Soder, has your broken arm? I go, shut up. I didn't break my arm. It was one of those lies. I was like, yeah. no, guys, I really did. I broke yeah, my yeah, arm. Yeah. I'm not fucking around, yeah. guys. I definitely didn't. Dude, yeah. <laughs> fucking middle school kids lies. Yeah. Oh. Uh. The bet. Um, actually, the, the car thing. I kept doing that into well into my twenties. Really? Yeah. Me and Jake Flores. Jake. Jake used to have this piece of shit Ford Focus, and I had like a shitty '96 Explorer. And uh, we would. Uh, yeah, one time, Chris Cubis, another comic, he had to like move. Yeah. And so he's like, asked me and Jake to help him move, and within thirty minutes of helping him move his stuff. Like one of us just dropped something and it broke. Yeah. And then we were like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> and then we just started trashing all of his stuff <laughs> in his like former apartment. We like took his bed frame and threw it through the wall. And like Chris didn't give it. We were just drunk. You know, yeah. it was like the, it was like <laughs> noon. We were trashed. It was Wednesday, and we were doing like a bit. We were like, we were, like this would be a funny sketch. It's called like quality movers. And yeah. they just destroy everything. But there's no camera, so it's not a sketch. We're just <laughs> crashing. Just destroying we're just, yeah. And so he had this old computer monitor, and uh, we're like, I'm taking the thing over my head and throwing it at uh, you know the wall and shit yeah. and smashing holes in the wall, and we're throwing it all over the, the parking lot trying to smash this computer monitor. But uh, So CRTs, those like cathode ray tubes, yeah. the screen is like an inch and a half of glass. Yeah, those old computer monitors yeah, are yeah. thick as they're, fuck. They're hard yeah. as shit to break, but inside, because the way those things work is it's this like gun that shoots electrons at the screen real fast, and that's yeah. what makes it light up, and you know it's like precise. But So it's got to be a vacuum on the inside. So when you finally break that screen, it fucking implodes. Oh, and shit. it's like a really cool thing to see. <laughs> so, you know, and I know that. So I was like, we got to. <laughs> I, I had been in that previous situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, guys, we got to destroy this thing. And we're trying all these ways to get it to smash and we can't do it. So eventually we took like just the cord to it and tied it to the back of Jake's car. <laughs> And then I was, like, riding it, and he was just driving it through the fucking parking lot, and I fell <laughs> off, and he's, like, going around corners and smashing it into, like, fire hydrants and shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we were, like, what if What finally did it? Um, I think that did it. It, we, like, hit a curb, and it popped and shit, and it was kind of underwhelming. Chris had another TV. Chris had, like, a 36-inch CRT yeah. that we brought. We moved into our new, the one, the apartment me and Chris moved into. Yeah. With the intention of we're gonna fucking destroy this thing at some yeah. point, right, right. and I there was one night I was drunk and I was like, either I'm buying PS4 or a shotgun from Cabela's <laughs> so I can shoot this fucking TV, <laughs> and I ended up buying the PlayStation, <laughs> which Bummer. is still a waste of money. But uh, I don't know. I think the shotgun you would have done that. I would have killed like, myself. Yeah, I yeah. would have done the TV, <laughs> and then the next thing would have been, like, like, or you would have hit someone with a buckshot. Yeah. And been like, I don't know. Now you have to do a comedy benefit once a year for your friend that's in a wheelchair. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you decided to fucking, to play s- fucking Sarah Connor and try to do a one-arm cock of a yeah, yeah, yeah. shotgun. <laughs> Which is the one that you spin? Oh, He's no, got no way, man. That's a repeater. The... Yeah, a repeater. You don't want a repeater. Yeah, yeah. Do the You'll fucking thing. blow your goddamn foot off. <laughs> Best case scenario. Yeah. Um, nah, we had fun. That man. was, yeah. The Those stories of the fucking... I the alcoholism days are pretty hilarious. Yeah, in Austin. No, I want to start drinking again. Just oh. like you know, this, <laughs> this kind of. Just... You know what? I, I 
I was helping Norman Hormones Wilkerson move one time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, or not move. He just had to move a bunch of shit in and out of his house. They bought the him and his wife bought this house and like remodeled it themselves. So they were moving shit in and out of the garage. And while we were moving, I found this pair of like white gloves, like very fancy like white gloves. And so I put them on, and then I was like just pantomiming lifting stuff <laughs> like a mime, <laughs> which was initially a very funny bit. But then after like twenty minutes, I still wasn't helping at all. I was just you know like pretending no. to carry stuff. And they're like, seriously, why are you even fucking here? If you're just gonna keep doing that. And then I left the patio door open. They're like, close that. The cats are gonna get out. And I just pretended to close it. <laughs> and the cats ran outside, and they just weren't amused. Lulu thought it was very funny. Lulu was there. I used to have roommates. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. But I also did a lot of, you know, the the best thing to, uh, well, not the best thing, but I miss having like roommates that I just didn't know at all. Mm. You know, where you yeah. just, there's like another, because women are fucking retarded. Women will find sure. three other women on Craigslist and they'll live together. And within two weeks, they're like, I love us. Yeah. <laughs> They're going on vacation together. They're going on vacation. They're leaving notes on the refrigerator. (laughs) You're gorgeous. Sleeping in the same bed together. (laughs) Like fucking sleepover. And it's like you're 28 years old. What are you fucking doing? That's right. Whereas like you can live, two men can live together and you'll be like, yeah, I think his name's Ronnie. I yeah. think, yeah, he works at, like, fucking... Yeah, I think his his uh, fucking dad just died or his something. His dad died or something, and he's, like, really... I mean, his room is a mattress, a fucking, like, a, the kind of boom box they sell to Mexican people at Best Buy, <laughs> and six copies of High Times magazine. <laughs> and I've only had one conversation with him, and he explained to me what the dark carnival was in relation to Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> And that's it. That's all I know about Ronnie. Yeah, he's probably my best roommate I've ever had. Actually. Yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. He's pretty good about making sure that toilet paper. We we've reached an equilibrium with who buys toilet paper yeah, when. That's nice. And that's that's what I dig about Ronnie. <laughs> See, I've always had my boy. I've never lived with a stranger. Really? It's always been. I lived with George and my boy Doug after yeah. college in a little house we called Muff Manor. Yeah. Where no one was getting pussy. <laughs> <laughs> the shittiest place I lived was in Los Angeles. I lived in a garage. Jeez. Yeah, but uh, that Larchmont, you were in Larchmont, right? <laughs> or in Atwater. Uh, Atwater. Yeah. Atwater. Yeah, that's a nice neighborhood, though. In a garage? Yeah, but the I lived in a garage that fucking, uh, there was sewage that would back up out of it. <laughs> oh. I soaked all of my clothes <laughs> and my oh, feces. Shit. It is a nice neighborhood, though. <laughs> what, Atwater? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Atwater yeah. Village. Whose garage yeah. was it? Um, some, some lady, you know, what's so funny. The first place I went to, like when I, I was staying on Ryan Stout's couch. And so I started doing the Craigslist thing, like trying to find a place. And every place I looked was a fucking nightmare. And I went to one place in Atwater the first time. And, uh, you know, it's like a recent, decently priced place. And I go in and it's like two, like, you know, like housekeeping, like those kind of ladies, like middle-aged, you know, sort of trollish looking, <laughs> right. you know, like, immigrants. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, like the 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 ones that look like they're, uh, you know, indentured servants for Motel Six, <laughs> you know, and uh, and then this older like Mexican guy showed me the place, and he showed me the room. He's like, I think it was listed for five hundred or whatever, but he's real out of it. And the room looked like shit, and I would have to be living with these like two old women, and it was like, dark in there, and it smelled bad. And he shows me the bathroom, and there's like the bathtub is just backed up with like fucking stagnant water. And I, I was like, what the fuck is this? He's like, yeah, it's okay, you know? <laughs> that just sounds like sex I'm slave like, quarters. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't know if this is okay or not. You know? <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I was like, you know, I just wanted a room. I, maybe it would be temporary. I had to get off my friend's couch. So he shows me the room, and I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, it's like 400 you know, everything included. You know, and I figured I'd just try and shake him down or whatever. But, yeah. And uh, he was like, yeah, that's fine. It's whatever, you know. You just come bring me the money, you know. So I'm like, I don't know, this seems like a scam. I don't know. Yeah, something. So I'm walking out and I'm leaving the place. And this uh this Mexican dude's like, um, you know, so I, he just like he's turns to me and he's like, If you uh, just want to you know, maybe come back a little later and bring me money and he's like tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> right. And what I'm like, the fuck? yeah, maybe. I mean, I'll go look at other places. And then there's this like painting of the moon in like the in the trash outside. And he's like, do you see this? And I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> you okay. And he's like, 
my girlfriend, she just she just broke up with me. And I, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And he's like, I paint I painted these for her. And she, she she break up with me. And then he starts crying on my shoulder. And I'm just like patting this fucking middle aged Mexican guy. He's guys. showing you the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've never met him never before. Never met him before in my life. <laughs> and he's just sort of crying on my shoulder and he's like sobbing. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I guess. He's like, but you come back later and bring the money. I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> so then I found this other place with this woman. And, you know, she's showing me the apartment. It's a pretty good deal. It's like 600 a month, everything included. And this is a room inside the house at the time. And, uh,. She's like, yeah, you know, my son's here half the time. He spends half the time with his dad. And it's like, you know, all this stuff dedicated to her son, which is fine. I guess people love their kids or whatever. But, you know, she's telling me, you know, like, oh, well, he's an actor and he's been in a lot of stuff. You know, Nickelodeon likes him a lot. You know, he's seven. And oh, it's no. like, oh, man, this kid sounds like he sucks. Yeah. And uh, so she's showing me the house or whatever. And she's like, well, this will be your room. It looked like a nice room and shit. And I'm like, yeah, it seems like a good deal. And I'm like, fuck it. Man, I just cut the check, hand it to her. I'm like, I'll move my stuff in later. And then uh, I was, like, talking to somebody afterwards, and I was like, yeah, I told them the deal. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, the kid's there? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, well, how many bedrooms is it? And uh, I thought about it. I'm like, well, there's my room, the bathroom. There's her room. And then, uh, oh, I guess this kid just doesn't exist. I guess she's <laughs> like, because there's no room for a kid what? here. Yeah, and I was convinced that she just had some dead son that she, like, you know, made up in her head or died. And, Holy shit. Uh, but the kid was real. I just, after the Mexican guy experience, I figured that you would thought, make sense. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So your, then she left you into just, the garage? No, the kid would sleep with her in her bed. Uh. There was another couple living in the garage, and then there was a guy that just rented the driveway and lived in a van. <laughs> And what the, the fuck? Yeah, the garage couple was like, it was, <laughs> it was this kid who was like, he was like near my age. He was like twenty or something, mm -hmm. and uh, just like a dumbass, over enthusiastic dude, bro. You know, right? Of course. It's like like an Occupy guy. Uh, no, this was right. I told you this story before. This I think was like so. right around when Occupy was just getting started. So there was Occupy LA going on, and that they, they went the couple and the guy in the driveway because they were like. It's a bunch of people, and we're like making a huge push to legalize weed across the country. <laughs> you know, like you know, there were those people or whatever. I love it. And uh, and yeah, they lived. But that kid out in the garage it was great. He had like a, his girlfriend was like twenty nine, and he was twenty, and she had like a mixed race kid. Oh, and the father, yeah. the father was this like enormous black dude. <laughs> they would like come over sometimes, and they would all hang out together. <laughs> that is so fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the guy that lived in the driveway, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fucking sound like a hip. Yeah, there was a guy that lived in a van in the driveway, like fucking Cody from Step by Step. And uh, he was this aging hippie that was like, yeah, I'm like a weed activist, dude. I actually have everyone in for this is why LA sucks because literally everyone in LA won't ever say anything after hi my name is other than here's what I'm doing currently, here right. are my fucking credits. You right, know, nobody's right, right. a fucking human being. Nobody's having a <laughs> shitty time. They're all just, you know, yeah. like, they present their resume to you immediately. So this guy's like, yeah, we actually have, like, a TV channel going on. We actually, you know, it's we've gone grown beyond a show. We have a whole channel now, which just meant, like, a website that had a couple of shitty videos. <laughs> right, 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 right. And right, he wanted right. to call that a whole TV <laughs> network. And, uh, but he would just bore the shit out of, of me Of course, constantly. dude. An old, have, an old hippie weed yeah, guy, yeah. the worst. And, you know, and he would fucking, you know, tell me these stories about, oh, yeah, we got this car, and we actually converted it to run on, uh, on hemp oil, you know, it's like a, it's like your car doesn't also need to smoke weed. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, but he's telling the story one time, and he's telling it with the same boring, casual tone he always does. He's like, "Yeah, you know, we kind of we hitchhiked uh, all the way down through Mexico into Guatemala, and then we wound up in." Uh, this mountainous region, and that's actually where I learned Spanish was from the locals in this mountainous region. And so when I would go into the down into the you know town or whatever, I'd speak my weird mountain Spanish, and everyone would laugh at me for being this you know gringo that didn't speak regular Spanish. And then actually, this like big uh, you know near civil war level conflict broke out, and I remember going down to town one time and. Kids were kicking some guy's head around the street like a soccer ball. <laughs> Anyhow, next week we're having like a weed benefit, and it's going to be great. Dude. <laughs> I mean, it's just fucking like, you know, sort of breezes past this Witnessing. amazing story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. amazing part of his life, he delivers with the same fucking, you know, tone. And I like to think that it was his fault, the Civil War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Is that you couldn't handle his fucking boring ass stories? Yeah, yeah. He really <laughs> started it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. So me and my ex girlfriend one time we were hanging out in her kitchen. We were like drunk at like two a.m. and her fucking roommate came home. There was this giant nerd. And he had like this fucking like personal pizza box that he puts in the refrigerator, and he goes. Okay, guys, this is mine, all right? Off limits. Don't touch. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Okay? This is mine. Off limits. Dude, As I know exactly where that man's coming from. <laughs> 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 I know. you probably eaten some of his food. Nope, never. Really? Yeah, never once. Huh. Someone else did. Yeah. Well, he's been scarred before, dude. Yeah. He'd been hurt before. Off limits, don't touch. Off limits, <laughs> don't touch. <laughs> I do love when someone raises the fucking stakes. It's like you're using threatening language now. <laughs> yeah, like right. you, we've escalated this relationship. Like, yeah, violators will be shot <laughs> yeah. on site. No trespassing on Stobbs candies. 